Our life is full of moments of stress, grief, and regret. Maybe due to financial issues, health concerns, marital problems, problems with the children. But no matter how bad things are, it will not come to the level that will make children's hair go gray. It will not come to the level of a woman forgetting about her baby. It will not come to a level that a pregnant woman will drop her load. It will not come to the level of looking at the people and seeing them. They look like they're drunk, but they're not drunk. All these descriptions are exclusive to one day. Allah told us that that will take place on the day of judgment. When he said, on that day, you will see that a woman leave, neglect her nursing baby, and a pregnant woman will abort her pregnancy. And you will look at the people and you will think they are intoxicated, but they're not intoxicated. But because of the torment, because of the situation, because of the horror of that day, it is shadeed. It is severe, a day so intense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, a day that will make young boys, their hair turn into gray. On that day of unimaginable fear, people will be divided into two groups. The first group, they are the group that are safe and secure. May Allah make us all among them. They are at peace because they lived with pure tawheed and they strived all their life to prepare for that day. They suffered in this dunya and they were safe on that day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ula'ika lahumul amn. These are the ones who will be secure. And in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La yahzunuhumul faza'ul akbar. The greatest terror will not grieve them. And the second group, this group will be terrified and regretful. They will be screaming. وهم يصطرخون فيها ربنا ربنا أخرجنا نعمل صالحا غير الذي كنا نعمل and they are screaming and say ya Allah bring us back so we can do things that are different than what we used to do we want to do something good now we want to do something righteous other than the evil that we used to do and in another ayah ربنا أبصرنا وسمعنا فرجعنا نعمل صالحا إنا موقنون يا الله now we can see the hellfire now we can hear the hellfire. Ya Allah, bring us back. We are muqinun. We have yaqeen now. We have certainty that it does exist. Even the day itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it Yawm al-Hasra. In Surah Maryam, Allah azza wa jal said, وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَ And warn them about the day of regret. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned several matters that will bring regret on the day of judgment. So let's take them one by one. First, regret of not giving Surah Al-Baqarah its due attention. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, recite Surah Al-Baqarah for constantly reciting it will bring barakah to your life and neglecting it will bring regret on the day of judgment and black magic. The magicians cannot touch the person who constantly recites Surah Al-Baqarah. If you can do it once a day, Allahu Akbar. If you do it once a week, Alhamdulillah. But at least once a month, have the Surah Al-Baqarah being recited in the house. How many complaints we get? Ya Shaykh, Jinn, Black Magic, Evil Eye, Nazar, all that. Subhanallah. Rasulullah Sallallahu said the house that Surah Al-Baqarah is recited in, the shayateen will not enter it. Second, participating in any gathering where Allah's name is not remembered. It will be a regret on the day of judgment. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whenever people sit in a gathering without remembering Allah azza wa jal, as if they have gathered on the body of a dead donkey, and it will be a regret for them on the day of judgment. Third, the regret of craving authority. Rasulullah said, you are going to compete over positions of leadership and it will bring regret on the day of judgment. Rasulullah made a dua against the leader who's not just. And Rasulullah told us that if somebody has been assigned as a leader of three, four people, even a community, whatever the number is, and he was not just with them, he will not smell Jannah. And we are fighting to get to these positions. It will be a hasra. It will be a regret on the day of judgment. The the fourth kind of regret is the regret of those whose acts of worship contained riya, the ones whom their acts of worship contained showing off. Showing off, my brothers and sisters, destroys, diminishes the amal. No matter how huge it is, if 
it was intended the pleasure of other than Allah, it's multiplied by zero. Imagine $10 million donation just to show off. Gone, gone. And the guy next to you, $10. From the bottom of his heart, he's been saving and taking from his mother. His is better than your $10 million. It's all about sincerity. Every single time you want to do any action, ask yourself one word, why? Why? Why am I doing this? Why am I volunteering? Why am I donating? Why did I grow my beard? Why did I wear the hijab? Why? If the answer is the pleasure of Allah, Allahu Akbar, proceed. If not, pause, reset, and refresh your intention. One of the Salaf, they walked into him and he was weeping, weeping. And the other man who came, he asked him, what's wrong? He said, did you read this ayah? He said, which ayah? And they found out on the day of judgment, many things they did not expect. They were going thinking that, oh, I died at 70, at 80, I have tons. I donated so much, I fasted so much. And they found out that because of showing off, all these amal were destroyed. The fifth, the regret of the people who backbite. They are literally handing their good deeds on a golden platter to the people they could not stand in the dunya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whomsoever have wronged anybody, let him settle it right now. Let him ask for forgiveness right now. Because on the day of judgment, there's no more dirham or dinar. The currency is hasanat and sayyat. And he will give the hasanat to the people he harmed. And if he doesn't have any hasanat, he will take from their evil deeds. We worked so hard. We are fasting. We're praying Qiyam, reading Quran. And at the end of the day, on the day of judgment, I cannot give my mother one hasana, but I give the guy that I spoke behind his back tons of hasanat. Those people will regret every word they spoke about someone, every rumor they spread about them, every news they forwarded without even checking the authenticity. The sixth moment of regret are the people who regret they did not take advantage of every single moment while they are above the ground my beloved brothers and sisters we do not want to be from the people who on the day of judgment they would say ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati ya rab ya allah i beg you the best of your names everybody who's watching us do not make us from the people who would say i wish i have done more i wish i've done more to this life 